Hi, it's The Wire. GamblersAdvisory.com, also BettingAngle.us. Today is Sunday, February the 25th, 2024. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now there is a young fighter from the UK. Has a lot of talent but is doing some things wrong. His name is Matty Harris. He's from Leamington, which is where I believe Randy Turpin, Boxing Hall of Famer who beat Sugar Ray Robinson was from, right? In my favorites folder right now, and let's analyze this fight together. We're on the hunt together for young talent. Right? We want to scout the fighter now. We want to monitor the fighter as he gets older to see if he has corrected the concerns we may have about his fight style. So in my favorites folder right now is Matty Harris against Konstantin Debyshenko. Right now, understand, his opponent, Konstantin, has a below 500 record. Right? Harris, very early in his career, only has about a handful of fights. He's fighting guys who either have very few fights or who have below 500 records. His upcoming fight, his next fight, <clears throat> is against a guy with a below 500 record. Now here's what you need to know about this guy. Here's why he looks promising. Folks, he's 6'8". Six, 6'8". Eight. Six, eight. He's extremely coordinated. You'll notice with his right hand, in the brief rounds, this fight ends in something like round five. In the brief rounds of the fight I have posted, and that's his most recent fight, you'll notice his right hand, he can throw almost any punch with it. Right? He throws an uppercut. He throws an excellent straight right hand. He throws excellent right hooks. Here's the problem. He's been on a KO streak. Right? At least he was going into his last fight, which he lost. Right? It's a fight in which he got stopped. Let me just say, I believe the great fighters early in their careers are really fighting against themselves. Don't get me wrong, they want to win the fight they're in, but they also want to work on things that they don't have so they can get those skills, so they can improve those skills. Now understand, when you're coordinated and you're 6'8", the thing that stands out about you is the fact that you're 6'8". You have a height advantage. You have a reach advantage. I believe your center of gravity is very important. Let me point out, we just had a bantamweight fight with Hunto Nakatani. <clears throat> and there's been some give and take on my opinion and the opinions of the people here online Right? Uh, many of you have said, hey, Dwyer, slow your roll. Um, I saw a slightly different fight. But to me, Nakatani, in his mid-20s, on the other side of 25, gives away his height. He just fought a 5'3 guy, and there are times in the fight where his head level is at the head level of the guy he's fighting. <clears throat> now, if you are the trainer for Matty Harris... You've got to tell Matty Harris, your height is an endowment. Opponents should have to reach across your body. Try to get through your jab to try to find your head and then have a hard time doing so. Your head should not be leaning over the pocket where a guy has access to it with hooks, 
You're 6'8", for crying out loud. You should be leaning back. You should also control the pocket, control spacing. You don't do that by going for the knockout in the first round, which is what he tried to against Constantine in the fight I have in my favorites folder right now. Please give it a look. Right? You shouldn't be trying to go for the knockout in the first round. You're in your mid-twenties. You're just learning the game. These are the early fights in your career. Why aren't you using this opportunity against a shorter opponent to establish a jab? In other words, if you're Maddie Harris, you should be studying Lennox Lewis films. Right, Lewis, great jab when he needed one. Right, I encourage people to look at the David Tua fight. Not only that, you rarely saw Lewis crouched in the pocket. Don't get me wrong, there are fights where Lewis crouches in the pocket, especially against guys his size, the Michael Grant fight. Right? But Lewis was a guy who maximized his physical advantages. If he was fighting a guy who was shorter, who was a headhunter, Lewis would lean backward. Again, look at the David Tua film. Right? Lewis would lean backward. Also, that Lennox Lewis jab, which is, by the way, what Lennox Lewis calls it, that Lennox Lewis jab would bludgeon guys as they tried to get inside against him. Now, someone told Matty Harris, maybe Matty Harris told himself, that his way to start him was by going for early knockouts. Right? I need for him to look up Tyrone Brunson's career. Right? These guys with knockout streaks, Berlanga, who now is back on a knockout streak, um, these guys with knockout streaks, they sometimes are going for the knockout to the detriment of learning other skills. Right? It works for an Arthur Baturbiev because Baturbiev had an extensive, look it up, extensive amateur career where he's fighting people like Usyk multiple times in the amateurs. But for most guys, I believe you need to spend the early fights in your career learning skills that would give you a sizable advantage when you start fighting world-class fighters. So here you have Matty Harris with height, with reach, Right, with skills, with suddenness. And he is using his left hand more as a measuring stick than as a jab designed to keep a shorter opponent with a below 500 record outside of the pocket. Right, as I have told the people regarding the Nakatani fight, I was a little bit disappointed that Nakatani, with his height, now granted, he was a southpaw fighting an orthodox fighter, but I was surprised that Nakatani, with his height, wasn't using his jab to keep the shorter man outside, right, to win the slow early rounds. Now, I agree, in this particular fight, Nakatani, with low volume, won the early rounds, Right? Fighting in his home country. Okay, fine. But understand, if you're Nakatani, and I understand he was fighting the champion, but if you're Nakatani, you should be prepared, in my opinion, to outwork your opponent. He's outside. You have the height advantage. You have the reach advantage. Why wouldn't you want to be active enough so a judge on the fence would say, well, I'm going to go with the more active fighter. Now here you have Matty Harris. Folks, 
Matty Harris should have been pumping a jab. Right? He should look at not just Lennox Lewis films, he should also look at Tyson Fury films. Right? You notice he seems to have pretty good legs. Why isn't he dancing a little bit? Aren't these the fights where you develop your movement skills? Because we've all seen top-notch heavyweight fights where movement becomes an issue. Philippe Ergovic would not have beaten Zhili Zhang if you believe he did. If he didn't have the ability to move away from Zhang when he was hurt. To move away from Zhang when Zhang, a heavy puncher, got in punching range. So it's a fascinating fight because Matty Harris is in complete control. Early in the fight, knocks down. Constantine, early, something like the second or third round. Then, of course, think about it. He's going for the knockout to the detriment of everything else to such an extent. He's throwing hard punches to such an extent that when he doesn't get the early knockout, he's exhausted, folks, by the fifth round. I'm not making this up. This is a guy who has coordination, has height. Looks like he has kept himself in relatively good shape. Folks, he's thrown so many hard punches. Rather than work on his skills, he's just trying to win the fight. He's thrown so many hard punches, he hasn't given himself the cushion that a jab would have given him. He has no idea about how to bust up an opponent with the jab, that he's out of gas in the fifth round. Not only that, his defense degrades. His below 500, much shorter opponent starts landing left hooks. Maddie, who doesn't have a hand up, hasn't established a jab where the guy would be afraid to throw the left hook because he'd be getting bludgeoned with this jab in return. The guy hasn't been bludgeoned. Because all Matty Harris is doing is sticking out his hand. Kind of like how Tyson Fury did in the second Deontay Wilder fight. He's just using his left hand as a range finder. So, of course, he's exhausted can't really clinch his opponent. Doesn't look like he's developed that skill. Right? Doesn't know, put it this way. Didn't throw the jab when he was 100% at the beginning of the fight. So, of course, we get to the fifth round where he's out of gas. Now he doesn't have enough confidence in the jab that he hasn't been throwing to throw the jab to give himself an opportunity to clear his head. Let me just say, Larry Holmes should have lost his title to Ernie Shavers. Shavers knocks Larry down. It's in their rematch. Larry goes down hard. I believe when Larry gets up, Larry doesn't know where he is. Put it this way. When Larry gets up, he looks dazed and confused. Shavers is one of the most fearsome punchers of the 1970s. Shavers goes after Larry. Larry, on instinct, these are the 70s, gets up on his toes, knows how to dance. And folks, I'm telling you, that movement and his jab in that moment saved his title. Look up the film here online. Right here you have a young guy with a lot of promise. Right? Matty Harris is a guy I'm going to be tracking. You have a young guy with a lot of promise. 6'8". Six, 6'8". Eight. Six, eight. And of course, he's ignoring his jab. So when he starts getting tagged later, he doesn't know to throw the jab. Since he was an unbeaten fighter, he lacks survival skills. He doesn't know how to hold on to the guy, twist the guy, keep himself in the middle of the ring 
He has none of those skills. He's just a 6'8 sitting duck. Let me also say too, guys who work on their lean, again, think Vitaly Klitschko, right? Guys who work on their lean, they know when they start getting hit with some shots that they need to lean away from them, back away from the opponent, force the opponent, again, Matty Harris is still 6'8 when he's getting hit with shots, force his opponent to realize that he's going to have to reach all the way across your 6'8 frame to try to find your head. So let me say this. I see that Anthony Joshua gave some kind words to Matty Harris to try to encourage him. I think a lot of people see the talent this guy has. My advice to Matty Harris is in his fight against yet another under 500 fighter that's coming up. Right? Use the jab. The jab will give you spacing. The jab will dictate the pacing of the fight. Spacing and pacing. You just got stopped in the fifth round. You need to pace yourself. View the fight as an opportunity to learn and showcase your skills. If you're dominating the fight, I might even use that opportunity to come in and clinch the guy just so I can practice my clinching in an actual fight. What I would not do is come out and try to go for the knockout. Try to load up on right hands and not pace myself. Ignore my left hand or just stick my left hand out to measure the guy. Player, there are things called jabs and left hooks. You should think about trying them, right? The guy looks two-handed. The guy's coordinated, right? Somebody told this guy he needs to win every fight by KO when the guy should be instead realizing I'm 6'8", I'm coordinated, that makes me rear. Rather than loading up on right hand after right hand, let me learn how to box. Let me tell you too, a 6'9 guy, 6'9, with coordination and with a pretty good right hand, decided he was going to learn how to fight left-handed. Tyson Fury now is the lineal heavyweight champion, right? Take a look at his films. I, I have no idea how the United Kingdom has a Lennox Lewis has a Tyson Fury, and yet you still have you still have heavyweights out there who don't value movement, right? Don't value using their legs and dancing. Don't value the jab. I I don't get it. What films are they watching? Who are their heroes? Right? Somebody please get Maddie. Harris, clips of Lewis and Fury, he might not realize it, but those are two of the best fighters in British boxing history at, at his weight class. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Please give the video a look. It's interesting when you're looking at Harris and you literally go from the third round when he looks dominant. He looks like a Goliath. But you notice he's not using his left hand. You notice he's not throwing jabs. Then you get to the fifth round, and he's completely tired. Let's go one step further, too. Life's unfair. Maybe this was the one fight where the guy woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Maybe he didn't even sleep the night before the fight. And he comes in, and he looks like a fighter with poor stamina. Player, that reputation is going to stick with you for at least the next two years, right? Jili Zhang has beaten Joe Joyce twice, 
and all many people think about is the fight he had against Jerry Forrest, how he fell apart in the second half of that fight. Right? Matty Harris, you need to be prepared for fighters to hang in there, to have more courage than they normally would. Because they saw you fall apart in your last fight. In the first half of the fight. Right? So they're going to be hanging around. It was, it was a six-round fight. So I shouldn't say the first half of the fight. But let's just say Matty didn't make it through the six rounds against a below 500 opponent. I'm guessing there are a lot of managers right now trying to get a piece of the action on an opponent against you. Right? So you need to use that to your advantage. You need to make your stamina a strong point, not an Achilles heel. So when you get to the part of the fight where an opponent thinks you're going to fade, after you've softened up that opponent with a lot of good jabs, you're able to operate. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me also point out too, and I don't say this lightly, this is the deepest heavyweight division I have seen in the time I followed boxing. Right, just the UK. Right, Anthony Joshua is out there. Uh, Fabio Wardley is out there. I guess Wardley's going to fight Fraser Clark. Um, you have a lot of talent out there, right, across the board. Uh, Joseph Parker fights out of the UK, even though he's from New Zealand. Um, you know, the last king of Scotland, Martin Bacoli, fights out of the UK. I see that Frank Sanchez has signed with um, Eddie Hearn. Um, all of these men have the capability to be champion on the right night, right? So if I'm Matty Harris, I would realize that there's a lot of work to do, right? I'm 6'8". I would realize most of the guys I've named don't have that endowment. I would work on maximizing that. I would not be giving away my height. I would not have my head over the pocket. I would be working on leaning back. Right? Vitaly Klitschko. Muhammad Ali tapes are what I'd be looking at because both of those guys knew how to lean back and then to come back with counters when they leaned forward. Right? I would not try to be the big man on campus maintaining a first-round knockout streak over sub-500 opponents and opponents with six or less fights, right? That's not going to help you later in your career when you're fighting guys who have, you know, 20 wins, one or two losses, um, you know, with 12-round experience. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.